Okay, hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. So for today's session, we are going to be talking about high probability breakout strategy. Um, we're gonna give, I can still see some people coming in, so I'll give about one more minute to let more people join and then we'll go ahead and get started. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the chat. Uh, I also wanna make sure everyone can hear me and see me in the meantime, so let me know in the chat as well. So I'll see you guys in about one more minute. Thanks everyone. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so welcome to today's webinar. Um, as per usual, a risk warning and disclaimer before we get started. Our products are traded on margin and carry a high level of risk and it is possible to lose all your capital. These products are, may not be suitable for everyone <clears throat> and you should ensure that you understand the risk involved. A disclaimer, the information in this webinar should not be considered investment advice or an investment recommendation, but instead educational material only. The material is just the personal opinion of the author and the client's investment objectives and risk tolerance have not been considered. IronFX is not responsible for any loss arising from any information contained herein and redistribution of the material is strictly prohibited. Okay, so I'm Melanie and I'll be your speaker for today. I'm an investment analyst from Rocket, who are finalists for best FX and equity research in the years 2019 to 2021. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to start off by looking at how exactly you can trade a breakout by looking at price action. And then we'll look at some candlestick breakout patterns, followed by pullback support and resistance um, for bullish as well as bearish breakouts. And then we'll look at correlation um, followed by multi-step stop loss and picking your entry and take profit. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So here's our price action trading approach. Um, firstly, let's talk about reversal and then we'll talk about breakout. So, why is it not? Okay, so this is basically the reversal. Um, the reversal occurs at the edge of our channel, right? So you can see price bouncing off of that channel. Here, price is moving in an ascending trend channel. So you can see price recently reversed off of that um the top of the um channel. And then we see this morning star formation forming here. And um, if you're not familiar with candlestick patterns, not to worry, I will go through some of the formations, top used formations in the next couple of slides. But here we have a morning star formation giving us a reversal pattern. Okay, giving and then Christ then breaks above this um what we call an overlap level. Overlap basically means that there are swing highs as well as swing lows, 
that line up in, in that same area. Okay, so with pairs lining up, pairs um, breaking out of that um, overlap area, um, we see that bounce over here and it breaks out of this area here. Okay, so the breakout now happens out of this resistance area. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, overlap occurs when you have swing highs and swing lows that line up. So we have two swing highs and one swing low here. So we're looking for an, um, this resistance area to break out of. And you can see there is this formation here as well. I'll go through this in a bit. And this is called the three white soldiers and you can see price breaking out of it. So the three white soldiers basically um, means that prices it gives us a signal that prices are going to continue in this uptrend. Okay, so it's breaking out of that level and we expect it to continue, which it did here. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk a bit about the anatomy of candlestick and we'll briefly go through the different breakout strategies um, for candlesticks in a little bit. So you can see this is the anatomy of a bullish and bearish candle. Um, starting off with bullish, we have the high price, close price at the upper wick um, and the body, um, followed by the body and then the open price and the low price. Whereas for a bearish candle would just be the opposite. So starting with high price again, the open price occurs at the start of the, or the top of the body and close price occurs at the bottom since we are going in a downtrend. So the open price would be here, close price here. And then your low price is just the tail of the candlestick. Okay, so let's start off with our top three candlestick patterns. Okay, let's firstly look at the hanging man. Excuse me. So with our hanging man, um, you can see prices are just moving downwards at the start. Um, okay, starting off with hammer, uh, we'll get into hanging man in a bit. Hammer's just we're just looking at this one candlestick here. So it's a shorter upper wick followed by a small body and then a long bottom wick. The hanging man would just be the opposite of that. So these kind of tell us that we can expect a reversal in price. So here for the hammer, prices are moving in a downtrend. Once we see this hammer, it's a indication that prices are going to reverse and head upwards. Hanging man would just be the opposite of that. Okay, next we're looking at inverted hammer and a shooting star. So again, these two are signals that prices are going to reverse off of um, whatever these levels are. Normally, prices will reverse off of pullback levels, so your support levels or your overlap levels that we went through earlier. Um, and I'll go through a couple of pullback levels as well in the coming slides. But basically, um, inverted hammer occurs when prices are moving in a downtrend. And then we see this and we are expecting a reversal to an uptrend. Shooting star occurs in an uptrend. Once we see this, we're expecting prices to go in a downtrend. So pretty straightforward so far. It's more about identifying, being able to identify these um, candlestick shapes. And the last single candlestick pattern that we have are the doji candlestick patterns. Okay. Um, so for our dragonfly doji, it's a sign that prices again are going to reverse. But instead of having our usual body of candlestick, we are greeted by this T kind of shape. Oop. So if we go back, you can see in our previous two slides, we see this very small Hammond's um candlestick shape. Here instead we see this um T shape followed by the Gravestone doji, which is just the opposite prices moving in an uptrend. Once you see this, we're expecting prices to move in a downtrend. 
Okay, so the reason for this kind of doji candlestick shape is because it forms when the open and the close price um, are equal or very close to equal. So that's why we don't see this body candle of the candlestick shape forming. So it's typically considered a neutral formation, um, suggesting that there's kind of an indecision between buyers and sellers. Of course, here we're seeing a bearish bias. Here we're seeing more of a bullish bias, but it depends on the price swing and, you know, the general trend as well. So all of these three candlestick patterns that we've gone through so far give us a reversal candlestick pattern. Okay, now let's move on. I'm going to look at the... Um, oop. Yeah, the next double candlestick patterns. So for these two, they're going to be two candlesticks instead of one. So here we have the bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing candle. Okay, so bullish engulfing basically is a sign that prices, you can see this red first, means that prices are moving upwards. The open is here, close here. So our bullish candlestick that follows that basically closes above the previous candles open. So previous candles open is here, bullish candle is open would be higher. And the length of the candlestick should be engulfing or rather longer than the previous candlestick. That's why we call it engulfing. Okay, so it engulfs the previous red candle. Bullish candle then opens at or lower than the previous um, candlesticks close. Okay, um, oop. if we look at the bearish engulfing, you can see that the shape is kind of similar. Um, prices, again, um, your open is here, or rather, I guess here would be your close and open here, but it's kind of the same concept. So your open would just be here, or rather here. Okay, so it opens either at or above the previous candles open, and it will close lower than the previous candle. Okay. So the main feature of this candlestick pattern is that the second candlestick's body just has to be longer than the first, um, and that's why we call it engulfing. Okay, um, both of these signals um, are more likely to signal reversals when they are preceded by four or more candlesticks. Um, and we'll show you some examples in a bit as well. Okay, let's move on. So the next is our tweezers. So for tweezers, you can see it's a repeated shape. Um, basically, there are no upper wicks for both of the candlesticks. <clears throat> for tweezer bottoms, prices are moving downwards, and this signal is a sign that prices are going to reverse into an uptrend. Then the opposite would just be tweezer tops, in which prices are moving in an uptrend, and... When you see these, this kind of candlestick pattern, it's a sign prices are going to reverse into a downtrend. Okay, I think these are pretty straightforward and these candlestick patterns can often be found with your an established support or resistance from previous um, from your previous price movements. Okay, let's move on. Now we're going to look at the top three triple candlestick patterns. Okay, starting off, we have our um, morning star, yeah, morning star and evening star shape. 
Okay, so starting off with morning star, you can see prices are moving in a downtrend. It starts starts off with a large bearish candle, followed by a smaller bullish or bearish candle. So this doesn't have to be bullish, it can be bearish as well. And then last point would be a large bullish candle. Okay, and then we are expecting a subsequent bullish price action. Okay, of course, the opposite would happen for our evening star. Prices are moving in an uptrend first. Um, it's made out of a bullish, long bullish candlestick, a smaller bullish or bearish candlestick, and um, subsequently a long bearish candlestick. And then we see a bearish price movement subsequently. Okay, so one of the limitations of this candlestick pattern is probably um, it's quite risky because it's not really backed up by volume or some other indicators. So for example, previously I was talking about how the tweezer candlestick patterns are most are quite often accompanied by support and resistance levels that's from previous price movements. So for this candlestick pattern, if you're just looking at it on its own, it might not be a very reliable um, signal. So normally with these candlestick patterns, we would do use some other indicator as well. So if you're able to find support and resistance levels, that's great. But if not, we would use RSI as well to determine if prices are currently oversold, for example. So if it's oversold and we're looking at a morning star, then you know you have confluence and confirmation prices are going to reverse and move in an uptrend. Okay, and of course, that would be the opposite for evening star. Okay, next, um, let's look at our next candlestick pattern. We have the three black crows and the three white soldiers. So for these candlestick patterns, you can see it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just basically a continuation of um, whatever the trend is. Okay, so if we look at the three white soldiers that we saw earlier, prices were already moving in an uptrend. And let me go back to the example at the start. Mm. Okay, so here we saw the morning star formation, which I'll get through, which we saw earlier. And then prices moving upwards. The three black so three white soldiers, okay, you can see this formation happening here. So it's not really a sign of reversal, it's more of a sign of continuation. Or if prices are breaking above a specific resistance level or support level, that's also a signal for breakout. Okay, so here's the three white soldiers, and we subsequently saw prices breaking out above the um, resistance level. Okay, so I think it's pretty straightforward that candlestick patterns are just basically three consecutive um, bearish or long um bearish bearish or bullish candles depending on the three black crows or three white soldiers okay um lastly our top three triple candlestick patterns are the three inside up and the three inside down um for this we're basically looking at um a double candlestick here um, the main point would be that the bottom of the candlestick should line up with the previous candlestick. Um, and it should the second candlestick should also be shorter than the first. Okay, and that's the same for inside down as well. Mm. 
um, these are also reversal candlestick patterns. So um, you can see prices are moving in a downtrend. Once you see this candlestick formation, we are expecting prices to reverse into an uptrend. And similarly, for inside three inside down, uptrend into a downtrend. Okay, so this basically shows that this current trend, so if it's a bullet bearish trend, it's basically a sign that um, your trend has lost momentum. And so a move in the other direction might be showing. So that's four, three inside down. If it's um, a bullish momentum, it's kind of losing that trend and then moving into a downtrend. Okay, so these work better in a trend, so a specific trend, and it's not so good in markets that are moving sideways. Okay, let's move on to the top three reversal patterns. So firstly, we have the head and shoulders top. <clears throat> you can see the pattern basically starts off with um, a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. So the swing high is over here. And this trend basically signals a bullish to bearish trend reversal. So prices are hitting break out of this neckline and heading towards our target over here. Okay. So the neckline basically occurs when you connect the bottom of that reversal from the left shoulder and from the head, when you connect that, that's your neckline. Oops. Okay. Okay, so this pattern is actually considered one of the most reliable trend reversal patterns. And it's one of several top patterns that signal with varying degrees of accuracy that an uptrend, upward trend is nearing its end. So we see prices making higher highs and higher lows, as you can see from this trend line here. Once it breaks out of that trend line, then you have kind of downward confirmation that prices are going to continue to drop. So you will put your target over here. Okay, next, let's look at the head and shoulders bottom. You know, this is just the opposite of the head and shoulders top, or it's also called, I believe, inverse head and shoulders. So but it's basically the same thing. So it's basically identified when the price action of your security or your asset um, price falls to the trough firstly, and then falls below it. So it makes a lower low and lower highs. And then it rises again. And then it falls again, but not as far as the second trough. Once the final trough is made, which was basically the head, um, then price would hit upwards towards that resistance. Resistance here means this neckline level. So again, the neckline is when your swing high connects with your second swing high of the left shoulder and the right shoulder. So once that's made, once price has broken off that neckline, then you're going for a buy towards our target. Okay, so this pattern is quite recognizable as well to an experienced trader. So it's quite easy to use if you're able to recognize it. And also if there are very big market movements, you can time frame for the head towards your shoulder pattern is fairly long so you, you can you can make you can profit quite a bit if market moves significantly from your entry which could be here towards your target okay so where would you place your stop in this case your target be here you will place your stop somewhere below the neckline 
So it still gives it some room to move around without you getting stopped out immediately if price does start to reverse. So it gives it some room to move or reverse back and then you it can still shoot up to your target. Okay, now we're looking at our double top. Again, double top formation patterns are quite easy to identify. Um, you can see basically two triangle shapes. Um, and these normally are a, I mean, they are bearish trend reversal pattern. So prices are moving in an uptrend. And once you see these formations, you're going for a sell towards a target that's somewhere below. The target, so the distance between where you enter versus your target profit should be about that same length or the same height as your triangle shape. Again, so that it gives it some room to breathe, um, some room to reverse and move around, but still make it to your target. Okay, so this is a very bearish um, technical reversal pattern because it basically shows that asset has reached this high price um, two times consecutively, but it has... Um, failed to move past that price. So it then shows a moderate decline. So, yeah. So if you use this double top pattern with a, um, a momentum pattern, so it could be maybe a MACD, it would be quite a bit more effective instead of just using a resistance level over here. Okay, so a double bottom, of course, would just be the opposite with prices moving in a downtrend and it tests this support level. It's unable to drop any further. So then it reverses con twice consecutively and then moves upwards um, moderately towards this target. Again, your target level should be the height of your candlestick patterns. Okay, so one way to identify it and avoid any false signals is to look for that upswing, or in this case would be a downswing. So the price movement should be clearly indicated in a downtrend prior to the creation of this pattern. So this, this basically indicates that price has been making continuously lower lows and lower highs, which we see here. You can see this low um, is followed by a lower low, the high is followed by a lower high, or here as well. Okay, and then you want to make sure that you're able to find that initial initial trough. If we're looking at the double top, then your initial peak, um, because this would be the maximum level. So if price manages to break above it, that's um, not really a sign of a double top. So we find the trough again, and then your second peak pipe um, press should more or less stop around that same level. Okay, it might even fall short of that that first peak's height because it will begin price will kind of begin to collapse um, once more. Okay, and then once you draw this neckline, this dotted line, then you can go in for your sell or for your buy towards your target, um, which would again be that distance. Okay. Okay, now let's look at our last pattern, which is your triple top. So this image is from Investopedia, but basically when you have a triple top, it's basically telling you that an asset is no longer rallying and that lower prices are on the way. So again, it's a bearish signal. So, okay, I guess the most significant shape here would be the, obviously the triple top. 
And then once price pulls back below that swing low, the two swing lows and the two troughs, then price breaks below the pullback lows and then your pattern is complete. So you're, if you're a trader, you would exit um, longs or enter shorts when the triple top completes over here, once it breaks below this pullback low. Okay, so if you are going in for a sell, in this case, if you're looking at triple top, you'll be going for a sell. So from here, you're going for a sell, you can place your stop loss above that resistance level. So above this triple swing high over here. Okay, so this three consecutive peaks are very similar to that head and shoulders pattern that we looked earlier. But in this case, your middle peak should be um, nearly equal to the other heights, the other peaks, rather than being higher. So it's also similar to the previous double top pattern that we looked at when the price reaches your resistance area twice, creating a pair of high points before falling. Okay, so it's traded um, essentially in the same way as your head and shoulders pattern that we went through earlier. Okay, uh, looking at our tri oh, triple bottom, again, we have that same shape. You have three swing lows instead of swing highs in this in this case, um, but it's basically the same prices break out of this neckline, which again is the, um, the connecting line between your swing, here would be swing highs. Between the swing highs, um, once price breaks out of that, then you can go in for a buy towards your take profit. In this case, your stop loss would be below your triple bottom. Okay, I think my camera froze there for a bit. Can you guys see me now? Okay. Okay, now let's look at the top three breakout chart patterns. Okay, firstly we have the falling wedge. So we are going in for a target, in this case, that's at least the size of a chart pattern for wedges and um, rectangles. Okay, so we have the shape that we're looking for here, and here's an example of what the falling wedge pattern looks like on your charts. So basically, it starts off with a rising trend, followed by a downtrend or your correction, and then it breaks out of that. So we're expecting prices to break out of it here um, and hit towards our take profit. Okay, so falling wedges are bullish signals. Okay, um, one of the most um, I guess the easiest way to identify these is by looking at your trend lines. So here we have one, two, three swing highs. Once you connect those levels, you form this descending trend line. And if you connect um, these two levels, um, you also be drawing your trend line and you can kind of figure out this shape as kind of a converging, um, the trend lines are kind of converging on your price chart. So that's an easy way to identify your wedge. Okay, so quite obviously the lines show the highs and the lows are either rising or falling at different rates. So it gives the appearance of a wedge since both lines are kind of approaching a convergence. Okay. Um... Okay, let's look at our bullish rectangle. Can you guys still see my screen? My screen suddenly blacked out for a second. I'm not too sure um, what happened. Can you guys see me?
Okay. Okay, good. Because my on my side, my screen suddenly blacked out, so oh, I'm not too sure what was happening there. But okay, um, getting back, we're looking at our bullish rectangle pattern. So basically, what we are expecting here is prices to prices are moving in an uptrend first. They're kind of moving sideways within this rectangular shape, and then it we're expecting it to break out. So once it breaks out of this, um, I guess trend line. Um, once it breaks out of that, we have upside confirmation. The prices are going to continue upwards, and then we're going into for, for our take profit. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Basically, consists of two parallel trend lines. So once you connect again for all these patterns, you're basically connecting the swing highs and the swing lows to form your pattern. So that makes it easier to spot any shapes as well. So your lower trend line acts as a support level, this one here, and your upper trend line here acts as a resistance level. Then these trend lines create kind of a rectangle shaped pattern. So this is what we call a consolidation phase. So during this pattern's formation, price moves sideways between the two trend lines. Okay, so yeah, this is called our consolidation period where neither your buyers or your sellers are in control and there's no real, I guess, trend. Okay, once the breakout happens, it actually breaks out above this entry and we're going for a buy towards our take profit there. Okay, um, next we have our bullish pennant pattern. So for a pennant pattern, we are looking for this kind of a shape here. Okay, so this occurs again after an uptrend. So you can see prices moving uptrend here. And it indicates a potential continuation for um, upward movement. <clears throat> okay, um, so this I think this bullish pennant name is also a flag shape, if I'm not wrong. Because this is commonly this line here. This shape is commonly referred to as a flagpole because it kind of resembles a flag shape. So once prices are moving in this bullish um, shape and it breaks out of this flag shape, then there is strong outward movement of the price um, of your security. Okay, again, the consolidation phase would be over here where there's no real trend. And the breakout from this consolidation period basically forms um forms this triangle shape or like pennant shape, and then it'll happen upwards. So break above this trend line and hit towards our take profit. So you want to make sure that you don't place your stop loss too close to the bottom of your shape. Um, typically you place it below the first swing low, so it gives it room to breathe. So you don't get stopped out here. Okay. Okay, are there any questions so far? Okay, if not, let's move on to combine these patterns with what we've learned so that we get um, a better, higher probability breakout strategy. So if you guys have joined us for a while, you would know the support and resistance patterns that we use, the trend lines, oscillator indicators, and momentum indicators. Okay, but if not, I'll just briefly go through them right now. So earlier I mentioned support and resistance. Obviously, it's just the price at which an asset tends to start falling, which will be your support, or stop rising, which is your resistance. Okay, and you use technical analysis tools like your trend lines, moving averages, chart patterns, so on and so forth. And we normally take note of these levels at your swing highs and swing lows. 
Okay. Um, yep. So some things to take note of, insignificant swings, you want to avoid using these levels as your support and resistance levels as well. Um, yep. Yes, another example. This is the something that you should look out for. Significant moves up or down, obvious peaks and troughs, and clear market movement. Okay, another example here. So support and resistance levels obviously can be used as take profit and stop loss levels. However, using a recent swing high or low as a weak level if it's the only level. So that's why we mentioned using multiple swings where at least two swing high or lows line up nicely and it's a much better level to use. Okay, so some starting points um, when picking your points, the you want to make sure that there is a swing high or low pullback or overlap level to start from. Go, far as, go as far back as possible and you want to make sure that you are just intersecting the wicks and not the bodies of the candlesticks. So for example here, you want to make sure there's a very clean cut of your candlesticks and you're not really doing this here where it's too messy. Okay, some more examples. Okay, now let's talk about the pullback and the overlap, support and resistance. Okay, because we've been mentioning um, pullback and overlap quite a bit in the previous slides. So if you're unfamiliar with what a pullback support is, it's basically when a um when it breaks out. So you can see here, for example, in this um GIF, price is at a swing low. Okay, and price has broken below that level. So it's a pullback level because we are expecting price to revisit it over here. And once price has revisited it, it then becomes an overlap level where your swing high and your swing low line up. So the pullback is kind of the in-between um, level before it becomes an overlap. Okay, so here's an example. We have three swing lows making it a support level. Once price breaks below it, it then becomes a pullback level and we're expecting price to revisit it and reverse off of it again. If we're talking about the support, prices are moving, um, prices react off of this resistance level at first. And once price breaks out of it, then comes a pullback support and we're expecting price to bounce off of that level. Okay, combining both, here's an example. Um, using a big swing high resistance. The moment price surpasses it, it becomes a pullback support. And price has made a pullback to our pullback support level and bounced off of it perfectly. And the moment price bounces off of it, it then becomes a overlap support. Okay. Um, yep, here's another example. So you can see price normally does come back to revisit it after since we have price bouncing off of it again um, here as well. So we can combine these with trend lines as well. If you are able to spot any of the candlestick pattern formations that we mentioned earlier, um, especially if you link them up with any of the pullback and overlap levels that we've mentioned that will really strengthen your analysis. Um, combining them with trend lines, of course, this only works in a um, in a trending chart. If not, you can also look at any patterns that we went through. Okay, and combining it with channels as well, resistance and Ichimoku, like we did earlier as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have for you guys for today. Are there any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, um, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys found this session helpful. And I'll see you guys again next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.
Thanks, everybody. See you guys next week.